Sure. Uh, my name is Trevor Hill. I'm a sophomore at CAS. Okay. And how did you end up getting on CNN? How did that all happen? <laughs> so I was one of the most active volunteers for NYU Students for Bernie. Uh, the girl, her name was Rose, who set up the, the club. She ended up reaching out to CNN last year while we were still very active on campus and uh, basically getting us invited to a bunch of CNN events like town halls, debates and stuff and interviews with the candidates. And uh, after that, she was just left on their mailing list. So now she just gets you know emails every once in a while like, hey, we're looking for students for this event. Forward this to any people you think would be interested. And I'm still good friends with Rose, so she uh, emailed me. So it was very vague. Uh, I was told by Rose that when she corresponded with the uh, representative from CNN, that they were looking for hard-hitting questions. And I don't know if you watched the whole town hall, but there were definitely some like really, really uh, tough ones. I don't know if tough is even the right word to describe it. But uh, she definitely, she held her own all night long. Uh, I'm not her biggest fan, but against some of that stuff, I would have cracked. But um, no, so uh, they, I thought it, they were looking for like controversial questions. So I submitted, the question I ended up asking the night of was the first one I submitted. And when I submitted that, I also submitted some biographical information. The rep followed up with me like, hey, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? And I was like, okay. Then she followed up again and asked for a picture of me, and I was like, oh my god, they're going to have me submit my question. Like, Because I mean, normally they would just be like, okay, you can come. But she kept following up, asking for like photos, and I was like, wow, so she's like going to have me ask my question. And then like two days before the event, she emailed me, and she was like, yeah, we were wondering if maybe you have like a more personal question, something fun, lighthearted. And I was just like, mm, nope. So I ignored the email, because you know, I, I wasn't planning on going if that was the case. You know, even if I got to ask a question on air, like, I wouldn't want to ask a fluff question. So, um, I ignored the email. She called me that evening because I'd given her my cell phone number. She was like, we really want you to submit that question. And so I thought about it for a minute. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. But right from the start, I was like, I'm not going to ask that question. But I put on, like, my Facebook and stuff, like, I'm going to be on CNN. And I'm asking kind of a soft question. Sorry, guys. Like, just in case they were, like, watching my social media, like, you know, they, it's so easy to type in, like, Trevor Hill, what's he posting? So, you know, I didn't want them to see that I wasn't planning on asking the question, but, yeah, I, I never intended to ask the fluffy <laughs> question. As fluffy as fluffy can get. It was, um, my favorite TV program is the HBO show Veep. In the show, Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character is forced to go to a lot of embarrassing and humiliating campaign events to secure votes. I was wondering if you could tell us about a time you felt embarrassed on the campaign trail and if there was maybe somebody you wanted to call out for putting you in that situation. And like, of course, like it's a fun question. If I met her for a cocktail party, like I would ask her. But like, you know, you only get so many chances to have a microphone in your hand and ask Nancy Pelosi a question. And I don't think anyone watching CNN's town hall was wondering if she had ever been embarrassed on the campaign trail. So yeah, they're just kind of like priorities, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I was hoping at least, like, for a glimmer of hope for the Democrats in the future. You know, I, like, I'm not a Democrat. I switched to vote for Bernie in the primary, but I went back to independent right afterwards. Well, I think I'm registered as a Green, actually. But I was independent before, and I still identify as an independent. But um, I was expecting her to, you know, give, like, a message to all the young people who are kind of feeling left out of the party. You know, I cited that statistic for her, which I was surprised by when I found it. You know, the 51% no longer support capitalism between 18 and 29. You know, that's crazy. So I was just letting her know, like, hey, this is the direction that the young people are going to be voting in once they're all of age. I mean, 18 to 29 are. But, you know, the younger generations, as they keep growing up, it's going to move farther and farther left. So what are you going to do as a leader in the Democratic Party to welcome those people into the fold. Like, where are you gonna move on policy to help these people, like, you know, recognize that maybe you're the best option? Like, I don't believe they're the best option, but, I mean, as far as major parties, yeah, they are. But, you know, I was hoping she would make a strong case, and instead she heard the word capitalism and just, like, lectured me for three minutes, but, uh, yeah. So, no, I didn't really get an answer to the question, but I was surprised 
by the fact that she was so open about a lot of the criticisms of capitalism. Like, you know, usually somebody would just say, no, 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 here are all the good things. But she was very willing to engage with like a lot of the problems, you know, income inequality, the wage gap between CEOs and their laborers, you know, that kind of thing. But then didn't really give a very substantial argument for why that's okay. It was just kind of like, we'll go back to the old model where there was only mild exploitation. Like, you know, it's like the 40 to one wage gap instead of 350 to one. It's like, nobody's arguing that 350 is good, but why are you advocating for 40 to one? Like, I don't know. That's just my personal problem with what she said. But as far as like actually answering the question, I didn't get an answer. Yeah, the conclusion was deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically it was, you know, just this is the way it is, you know, you need to understand what's good about it. And I was like, well, you know, 51% of us don't agree. So, you know, it's not that just me as a personal, you know, attendee at this town hall, I don't agree with it. I'm saying there are plenty of people who have this issue and you're not addressing it and you're pretending like it's a non-issue when in a couple of years, once they're running for office, the whole political spectrum is going to change. So... You know, that's my two cents. No, I mean, um, so the thing is, in an official capacity, it's a town hall, which means, you know, some residents walk up and ask their question, and nobody's constraining them. I Basically, in every way, they encouraged me to ask the soft question, but they never said, when I hand you that microphone, this is what you say, you know? So they couldn't punish somebody they couldn't be like you know you're you're horrible like how dare you i got a lot of dirty looks from uh the the regular crew members tapper was fine uh you know pelosi didn't say anything to me afterwards but the regular crew members were all like shooting me dirty looks and as i was walking out of the room one of them uh, she was one of the people i think working uh behind the scenes during the like dialogue that was happening before the town hall but uh, she looked at me and like tilted her head and she was like, nice question, like trying to tell me like you're a dick basically. And you know, and I did feel horrible. Everyone there was so nice, which is why I felt really bad changing my question. But I was also, you know, very clear when they asked me for my information, they asked who I voted for, what my like political identity is. So, you know, I was very open with them about the fact that I'm not a Nancy Pelosi supporter. And still they were like, this guy, he'll ask the soft question. <laughs> like. I, I don't think they should have been surprised, but I also don't blame them for, you know, kind of being peeved. Especially, you know, they work hard to make those shows as entertaining. I don't know if it should be entertaining, but they make it as entertaining as possible. And they have a certain way they want to end it, and I screwed it up. And the whole team worked on that ending. So, you know, I do feel like kind of a dick for it. <laughs> No, when I left, I keep telling this to everybody because it is actually what I thought would happen. You know, I, I thought like an aunt in Kansas would call me and be like, I saw you on TV. And I'd be like, yeah, that was great, huh? But it blew up like on a scale that I never expected. You know, I, I joked, I think when the Young Turks were interviewing me, I was like, I didn't think so many people cared what Nancy Pelosi had to say. Like, I mean, I mean of course they do. She's a leader in the Democratic Party. But you know, it was just, I think the reason it blew up wasn't necessarily because her answer was bad or because, you know, I flipped the script on CNN, like, people do that all the time. But I think the reason it blew up so big is, and especially on the internet, is that young people like myself, this is just my feeling and the, the feeling I get from a lot of friends, is, you know, we watch the media and we're not represented. You know, you've got your run-of-the-mill like 22 year old white guy in a suit like sitting there representing the youth and saying everything that all the people 50 years older than him are saying so you know we watch and we have questions we have opinions and they're never even mentioned it's like they don't exist it's not that they debate them and it's unfair it's that they literally pretend like it's not happening so it's so frustrating for young people to watch that and be like you know i why am i even watching the news like you know none of this has anything to do with the way I want this problem solved, or the way I think the world should look. So, uh, yeah, I think that's why it blew up, as people were like, finally, because not, I mean, since Bernie Sanders dropped out of the primary, really, you haven't heard anybody addressing the, even the word capitalism, you know, <laughs> like, that kind of thing. It's, it's just, you know, it was kind of like dangled in front of us, like, hey, he could be president, you know, maybe we could actually address these things, and then it didn't happen, and then we've had, like, radio silence for, like, eight months, so... I think that's why it blew up.
So the first night, I wasn't surprised. Like right after the debate, some millennials reached out to me. It's like a Facebook news organization, like all online. And they were super cool. And it was a super casual interview. Like, and I thought that would be it. I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, they've got like 10 followers on Facebook, but like, you know, that's fine with me. But then, uh, who was it the first? I think it was Huffington Post was the first ones to reach out to me. And I was like, really? Like, and I, he reached, it was a guy on, he reached out to me via Twitter. I was like, is this guy even really with HuffPost? Like, you know, who is he? I don't recognize his name. But he ended up publishing two articles that went on their front page on, fit, like, uh, you know, their thing on Twitter. You know, sometimes it just goes on the site in the editorial section or something. But they, like, posted it on Twitter. And I was like, oh, my God. So HuffPost, like, actually was interested. But the big one that went really viral was the Now This video. Uh, it, it's got, like, almost two and a half million views now, I think. It, that was the one where, like, suddenly Twitter blew up and Facebook blew up and everyone's, like, messaging me. Uh, and before that, like, there was a mild extent, you know, it happened to a mild extent. But also, uh, The New Yorker, uh, they reached out, and I did an interview, but it's for an article on the socialist, or democratic and democratic socialist movement uh, in the U.S., and so it's not going to come out for a while. I was the first person interviewed for it, but she said it was approved by the editor, so look out for that one. But, um, yeah, lot, lots of small organizations, too, a lot of radio shows and podcasts and stuff. But, uh, yeah, HuffPost, Now This, and The New Yorker were the big three. I mean, kind of, like, it's already, like, completely blown over. Like, you know, yesterday I was getting, like, well, so, like, two days ago I was getting, like, a thousand Facebook notifications a day. And then yesterday it was, like, 50. <laughs> and now I'm down to, like, my regular, like, five. So, you know, I knew as soon as it started blowing up, I was like, this is just the latest thing that they're going to latch on to. And it'll blow over, and it already kind of is, which I'm thankful for. My phone was just going nuts for days, but um, yeah, so I'm, I definitely don't feel like a celebrity. Like it was like a, a tiny, you know, the 15 seconds of fame, basically, or 15 minutes of fame. I don't know, whatever the expression is. They were actually uh, at NYU. A lot of people recognized me, and uh, like two or three people at a protest I went to that was not NYU associated recognized me, but, uh, but it's not, like, it's not like, you know, I've got paparazzi following me or anything. Like, I'm still living a very normal, <laughs> normal way. Oh, yeah. public policy. Okay. It, so it's shared between Wagner and CAS, but uh, I am officially enrolled in CAS. Obviously, I can't enroll in Wagner. Very educated on <laughs> what's going on, so. Oh, yeah, um, I mean, definitely not, like, I mean, I don't want to rag on any other degrees. I was going to say, I'm definitely not a math major or something. But of course, math majors can be political too. But like, you know, I'm very focused on politics is what I mean. I, I don't know if I'm going to see like, you know, a causal link between like my question and Nancy Pelosi suddenly moved left on an issue, you know. But I think it's important and it's going to, it'll only build up. It'll only get more and more intense for the Democrats. You know, it's important that this criticism be publicly available you know it's, the criticism can't be happening in living rooms where nobody else is going to see it especially as such a huge chunk you know millennials are the biggest voting block in the u.s 51 percent of us believe something and yet zero percent of the media represents that so i mean zero percent of major media so you know it's only going to get more and more intense as more and more people are you know not comfortable with the fact that these questions aren't being addressed so it'll be a tiny little building block on that movement, but no one's going to point to the moment when Trevor Hill walked on CNN and be like, that's when the revolution started, you know, like, nothing like that. Oh no, I'm pretty sure I've been black blacklisted from them. Uh, maybe I'll like, I have an identical twin, so maybe I'll use his ID or something to get into things, but... Yeah, no, I'm, they will never allow me back in an event. I mean, I don't know how their system works. Maybe they're very, very comfortable with letting people back in who didn't follow the rules, but I'm pretty certain CNN is a little more controlling than that as far as their audiences go. <laughs>